Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a healthy and productive weekend. Welcome, Kyber. Hi, Jainil. In this class, everyone, we are looking at task two writing, how to get those band nine ideas for your essay going through a new task two essay question with some steps for planning. While we wait for some more members, uh, this is um, a lesson that is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for the general IELTS. Visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you get ready for the exam, both with the communication and English elements. Welcome, Carolina, our moderator. Good to see you in the class. Hi, Rashika, Rahul, Bharat. Good to see lots of you. All right, everyone, this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. Um, it's uh, a one-time payment for lifetime access. All you have to do is click that big red button to join. We are a British Council IELTS Registration Center and certified agents. For the general IELTS, it's the green background, and you can click that big red button to join us uh, there. Again, lots and lots of practice exams, videos, original contents. We are world leaders when it comes to uh, preparation for the IELTS exam. All right, everyone. Um, if you'd like to get our apps, you can certainly do so. Uh, just look for Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help in your app stores. And if you have questions, uh, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Of course, you have writing and speaking help on our websites, and you can get our exam books from Amazon as well. Okay, everyone. Uh, so today we have some task two writing, um, and then uh, we have listening parts three and four. That's a continuation from yesterday. Uh, that will be an all chat class. Okay. All right. Kyber, I see that you did a mock exam. I'm happy about that. Those are important. Hope that went well. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a few more classes, of course. And uh, right now, let's get into our task two writing question. So um, for the writing section of the IELTS exam, you have one hour and uh, 40 minutes of that, two thirds of that time is your task two. You should do it after your task one. It's worth two thirds of your total mark. So it's weighed with uh, twice the value as task one. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, Rajveer. Um, hi, David. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, first step when we're looking at a task two question is just to really read the question carefully. You have to remind yourself that this is not the reading section, so um, you should not rush through the question. You should not rush reading it. Uh, it's an unfortunate common mistake that students read the task two question really quickly and then they start writing and too late they realize that they've been writing off topic because they rushed reading the question. So do not rush reading the question. Be really careful with it. All right, here we go, everyone. So uh, IELTS task two writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Online education is rapidly increasing in popularity. What has led to this development? What are the advantages and disadvantages of online learning compared to in-class instructions? Provide examples and explanations. Write at least 250 words. All right. Um, so let's, um, let's paraphrase this. So first of all, let's make sure that we clearly understand this question. And let's see how many synonyms and antonym negatives and definitions uh, we can come up with to 
clearly and accurately paraphrase this question. Paraphrasing means to restate the same question using different words. Now, this isn't necessarily your introduction. Okay, your introduction should be a little bit more than just a simple paraphrase of the question. Uh, but definitely, it's a good way to start. Um, you should always do this at home when you're practicing task two uh, because it will give you clarity on the question and it will help you to generate ideas. So it's a, it's a key part of that uh, step to having band nine content. Okay. Yeah, Kyber, so um, you're saying that it took a lot of time to plan uh, task two. Um, your planning, Kyber, should not take you more than five minutes. So if you're taking more than five minutes in the planning, then you're not doing something right. Um, you're writing too much information down. In the official exam, Kyber, the critical thinking part of it happens in your head. You don't write it down. You don't have time for that, okay? Um, so you shouldn't be spending more than five minutes on the planning in your actual official exam. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> in response to Kyber saying that planning takes too much time or takes a lot of time, um, in your, so let me, let me kind of step back here. Uh, when you are practicing Uh, task two at home, you're planning and developing ideas should take 20 to 30 minutes and you should write it all down. Okay. Uh, during your official IELTS exam, Your task to uh, planning must not take more than five minutes. You should only write down the paraphrase of the question and your thesis. Okay, and likely these will already be an element of your essay. Okay, so uh, that's that's the difference. All right. So when you're planning, practicing at home, that's what you you should be thinking for the planning part, um, because you're writing down each step of um, the planning. So your topic, your controlling ideas. Um, but during your exam, your task two planning must not take more than five minutes. You need 35 minutes um, to uh, write the essay. Okay. Hopefully that's clear for everyone now. All right. So uh, let's jump back to paraphrasing this question. I'm going to paraphrase and then uh, you paraphrase and uh, we'll compare and see what we can come up with. So, All right, there's my paraphrase uh, to this question. I see that uh, lots of members have also paraphrased, which is great. All right. Uh, Rajveer says, nowadays, online learning has become trendy. What are the reasons of this phenomenon? 
What are the pros and cons of studying courses online rather than classroom instructions? That's great, Rajveer. Nice, uh, nice paraphrasing. Okay. Uh, Rahul says web learning is getting more attention nowadays. Uh, Rahul, nowadays is one word. Okay. Um, what are the factors contributing to this? What are the positives and negatives of web learning as compared to traditional classroom teaching? Very nice, Rahul. Um, notice all the different paraphrasing for online learning uh, and even traditional or in-class learning. Uh, Rajveer and Rahul have absolutely come up with good terms uh, for that as well. Okay. Uh, Kyber says, online education is becoming popular quickly as the support and affection towards distance learning has become a trend. What has caused this change? It's not necessarily an improvement, Kyber. Um, write the benefits and deficits of e-learning compared to face-to-face -face learning. Yeah, so even more paraphrasing, right? E-learning, very good, Kyber. And uh, distance learning, that's another way that we kind of call internet studies these days as well. Absolutely, very nice. So look at all the different great vocabulary that we're gathering to use for our essay. Um, Jainil, another way, virtual pedagogy is drastically increasing in popularity. What are the reasons for this development? What are the pros and cons of online learning compared to face-to-face? -face? Very good. Mahi says the popularity of virtual learning has, be has been increasing. Very nice use of present perfect. What are the reasons behind this advancement? What are the positives and negatives of learning as compared to physical classes? Very good. Okay, nicely done. Uh, Rashika, the preference for remote learning is rising quickly. What is the reason for this development? What are the benefits and negatives of online learning in comparison to face-to-face -to -face learning? Give examples. Very nice. Uh, Preeti says, online classes are continuously uh, taking a bigger role in education. What are the causes of this change? What are the benefits and deficits of online education? compared to manual classes instructions, um, compared to physical class instructions. Pretty, compared to physical class instructions. Okay, Bakrat, e-learning is uh, on a rise quickly throughout the world. What has uh, guided this development? What are the merits and demerits of online learning instead of offline classes? Uh, very nice, Bakrat, give examples and um, support. Kashirsha says schooling from home is getting popular these days. What has uh, accelerated this phenomenon? Uh, what are the pros and cons of this trend? Give examples and explanations. Very nice. Hi, Andre. Okay, great. So lots of great paraphrasing. Uh, that's fantastic. So clearly, uh, we're on the right track. Um, this is what I wrote. Online education is rapidly increasing in popularity. What has led to this development? And I wrote, uh, learning via the internet is quickly becoming mainstream among pupils. Uh, what are the motivating factors behind this change? Uh, what are the positives and negatives of remote learning via in-person uh, in study? Um, sorry, that meant to say versus. There, let me just make that correction. Okay, so what are the positives and negatives of remote learning versus in-person study? Give examples and explanations. Okay, and I use the word mainstream instead of popularity or popular, mainstream, okay? And pupils instead of students. Okay, good. Um, so what's the topic here, members? What are we talking about? What's in discussion, okay? So when you think about the topic, you simply need to ask yourself, what is in discussion here? And even if it's absolutely crystal clear, you should still um, directly ask and answer this question just to make sure that um, you know, you're thinking about it and you're thinking about it in depth. Uh, online learning, says Kashir. So we're talking about online learning. Yeah, absolutely. So online education. 
Very good. And what are the controlling ideas? So, um, yeah, everybody's got online learning. That's great. Okay. Um, Preeti says we're talking about the popularity of online learning. Uh, yeah, I think in this case we're talking specifically about online learning if we think about the controlling ideas as well. So um, what are the controlling ideas? Okay, so Carolina says the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, I think there's a little bit more before that, Carolina. So... Um, Okay, advantages, disadvantages. All right, and there's another question there. Yeah, very good. So Kyber says, um, the question is also asking what has caused this change, okay? And the benefits and deficits, okay? So Bakrat says the causes for it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So it's... Yeah, that would be all of the controlling ideas. So the reasons for its popularity and the advantages and disadvantages um, of online learning. Okay, absolutely. So that's what we're talking about. Those are the controlling ideas. Okay. So now we do some critical thinking, right? So... Let's do this. Uh, before we do that, quick question here, members. Um, what is the voice of this essay? So as some of you know, some of you might not, um, there are three voices in writing. Generally speaking, there are more subcategories, but there are three uh, main voices of the author. It's called first, second, and third person voice. First-person voice is when the author is speaking directly from their own subjective opinion. So, in my opinion, I believe. Uh, Second-person voice is when you speak directly to your reader or your audience, um, like you should follow these steps. And third-person voice is when we are objectively seeking the truth. So, we do not use I, me, or my, or you. Uh, we simply say people believe that. Okay, and Rajveer, Kyber, Janiel Abhishek, Andre, Preeti, Carolina all say this is a third person essay. Yeah, absolutely, because this essay does not ask for your personal opinion. So you can see in the question that it doesn't say, and you should always look at the original question. So, yeah, in the original question, you do not see uh, the uh, request for your opinion. So it doesn't say, what do you believe? or give explanations from your own opinion or your own experiences. So you're using the third person voice here, which means no I, me, my, you anywhere in the essay. Okay, that's very important in this case. Most academic essays are third person voice because most academic essays seek a general truth, not the opinion or personal opinion of the author. Okay, so this is a third-person essay. And by just looking at this question, um, what kind of grammar structure do you think is going um, to be required in this essay? So by looking at this question, um, there's definitely a type of grammar that I feel will be uh, frequently coming up in this essay. Can anybody tell me what that is. And so again, if you look at um, the original question, uh, you can kind of see this. So what, what grammar structure? Okay, and you should again recognize this from the question also. Yeah, so Preeti says present and present perfect. Yeah, the present perfect for sure. So absolutely take notice of that in the question. So what has led to this development, right? So 
Um, online learning, it's an achievement. It's a continuous change in society. So um, those ele- it's an experience, right, that we emphasize. Uh, it's an expectation. So all of those reasons that we use the present perfect, expectation, change over time, um, achievement, uh, those concepts are heavily contained in this question and response. So definitely the present perfect. Um, simple present too, but present perfect for sure. Okay, so just like with uh, part two uh, cue card, you can kind of recognize what structure should appear, okay? So you should be thinking present perfect, passive present perfect, present perfect continuous. Those should all be coming to mind, okay? All right, so let's brainstorm. So when we plan for a band nine essay, when we want to create band nine content, uh, then we need to have good ideas. And so we need to think critically about the topic and controlling ideas. So what is online education? Okay. So <clears throat> give me a definition for that. So what comes to mind for you um, when, um, when you think about this? Okay. Yeah, Kyber, absolutely, it's a good idea to identify the dominant tenses in your response. So Abhishek says it's an education that takes place by pupils over the internet without the need for a physical classroom. Okay, Abhishek, that's, I think, a good, fairly good definition. Let's see what some of your classmates come up with. And it's interesting because we're doing online education right now. Um, Rajvir says a platform where students use uh, technological tools to acquire knowledge. Okay. Uh, Mahi says it's learning throughout through the World Wide Web. Okay. Kyber says online education is a form of learning which is delivered and administered using the internet. Okay. Uh, Amanda Way says it is remote learning. Amanda, maybe be a little bit more specific in your um, answer to this topic question. Janiel says sitting at home and learning on the internet. Okay. Rahul says uh, online education is something that is available live or in recorded medium through the internet. Okay. All right. Um, I would say that online education is remote learning through the use of uh, computers and the internet, whereby uh, students and teachers are separated by uh, space and or time. Okay, um, so this would be my specific uh, response uh, to this question. So um, what is online education? It's remote learning through the use of computers and the internet whereby students and teachers are separated by space and or time. So right now we are in real time, almost, right? We're separated by about a five second, six second uh, leg in time, okay? Um, but of course, if it's pre-recorded, <clears throat> you can be separated by much uh, more than that, okay? All right. So again, really, uh, so here's a question. Um, how did I come up with this definition? So what do you think um, led me to this answer for what is online education? What had to happen as a mental process for me to just right now on the fly come up with this? Okay. Yeah, very good, uh, Kyber. Absolutely, Carolina. Yeah, I visualized it. So I, I saw myself sitting at the computer thinking about my own online learning, and I thought about, okay, what do I need for this? So I visualized myself in the context, and I thought about the question, what do I need for this? And I thought, okay, well, I need a computer. 
I need an internet connection. I need a teacher. The teacher is not necessarily here and they're not necess necessarily teaching me in real time, right? So Preeti says it helps because I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yes, you're right, Preeti. That certainly does help to give that level of detail. Okay. Um, so what's my next question? Okay, instead of the answer, I want to give this question. I want to give this question uh, to you. So uh, what would you ask next about the topic? So, of course, it's a why question that's coming up, right? Our system of questions are what, why, and how. Uh, what is the full why question here? So after asking what is online education, what would be a good why question? All right. Let's see if you come up with it. So Rajveer says um, we can ask why has online uh, learning um, become trendy? Uh, Kyber says why is there online education, which is kind of the same as what Rajveer is asking, Kyber. You're asking about um, the reasons for it, right? Sure. So, um, why is online education popular? And here, basically, we're also, in essence, asking uh, what are the advantages of online learning? Okay. So it's important to recognize that you're answering both questions here because the reasons for its popularity are clearly a result of its advantages in this case. Okay, so why is online education popular? What has led to its popularity? What do you think? Okay, what are some of the, the answers for this question? And you're all asking the same question in different ways. Nico says, why should we learn through the internet? Um, again, it's what are the advantages? Why is it popular? So uh, all roads lead to Rome in this case, right? Okay. Okay, so Kashirsha says accessibility. Um... Amanda says the reduced cost of commuting. Um, what do you mean, Amanda, by cost in that context? Okay, so it is more accessible. Okay, uh, Rashika says it's convenient. Um, yeah, so it takes less time, right? There's no commute. You don't have to get into a car, okay? You don't necessarily have to get dressed up uh, to go to an online class, especially if you're not uh, visible through a camera. So uh, maybe some of you are still in pajamas right now or you've just gotten into pajamas and you're getting ready for sleep and it doesn't matter, right? So Abhishek says no uh, geographical boundaries. Okay. So, uh, more access, that's more accessible. So accessible means, uh, no restrictions of distance or borders. Yeah. Okay. You don't need a student visa to learn in my class. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, um, Rahul says you can get more expert teachers. So, uh, yeah, more accessible, convenient um, options, right? So, there's more options. Options for teachers and for content, right? Absolutely, that's true. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's cheaper, right? Not always, but can be. OK. 
Okay. I have a feeling that's going to change with time, but um, sure. Okay, so those are some great answers. So it's accessible, it's convenient, um, it's uh, instead of cheaper, um, what would be the right word here? I don't know if anybody used it. Uh, so let's try to focus on having parallel grammar. And I highly recommend, especially those of you who are now practicing this regularly, you're feeling confident, um, let's have some nice uh, parallel grammar among our words. So uh, accessible, convenient, and let's change uh, first cheaper and then um, we're going to change options as well. Very good, Carolina. That's the word I'm looking for, affordable. Yeah, very nice. Janiel got it too. Good. All right, so now we've got parallel grammar, affordable, convenient, accessible, and uh, how about um, options? Okay, what would be a better word uh, than options to have nice parallel grammar between convenient, accessible, and affordable? Okay, economical is good as well. Um, Rajvir says alternatives. I don't think that's parallel grammar. Yeah, uh, diverse, Kashirsha, I think is a better word. Accessible, convenient, diverse, and affordable. Okay, instead of alternatives. So diverse, I think, is a better word. Very good. Okay. All right, so accessible, convenient, diverse, and affordable. Those are all great reasons. All right. So how does it work? Um, how does it work? Okay. I'm going to give you the one answer that I think everybody will think of quickly um, through the use of a computer and the internet. Um, and here, you want to think of some details as well, okay? Um, so when you think of the computer and the internet, yes, okay, that's the basic, but you want to think of uh, software, um, video, audio, camera, mic, okay? So you want to think about those as well through the use of computer and the internet, okay? Uh, more choices is not parallel grammar, students. Kaldeep, Preeti, careful with that. Just a quick kind of reflection on the previous. Okay, good. Uh, so now we want to ask uh, one more uh, question here. And um, what is that? So before we start... Uh, putting together our thesis statement, we want to ask one more question. What is one more question that we need to ask so that we can come up with our band nine content? Yeah, so Rajvir says the deficits of online learning, so the negatives, right, the drawbacks. There has to be some. There's usually two sides to every uh, story. Uh, let's stick with the why form of the question. Why? Can online education uh, be disadvantageous compared to in-class learning? Okay. So, what um, what are your answers for this? Okay, so Rajvir says uh, distractions. Okay, or another way we could say that on the other side is less focused. All right, Kyber says requires time management skills. I think that's uh, too specific. Abhishek says... Uh, it, there could be technological issues, so um, yeah, technical problems, sure. OK, 
Okay. All right, Preeti says, no discussion with peer groups and teachers. So <clears throat> I would say lower quality of socialization with peers and teachers. Okay. All right. Ferdov says it can lead to obesity, uh, cardiovascular disease, and uh, laziness. Okay, um, for dogs, I think you're going a little bit extreme, but I do think you have a good point there. Can you uh, summarize that in a little bit simpler way? Okay. Uh, Rashika says no group activities. I don't know about that, Rashika. That's a hard sell because uh, we do have group activities um, even here in uh, our classroom. We have kind of group activities, but certainly there's group activities in online learning as well. Okay, so Preeti says laziness. Yeah, so lack of physical. Yeah, if we work from home, we learn from home, we do everything from home through the internet, it's definitely reducing our uh, physical movement. So um, there is a benefit to having to walk to work or riding a bike to work as well. Okay. All right. Um, good. So... Those are the deficits. Okay. All right, everyone. So now we have a lot of good information, and now we want to come up with our thesis statement. So you should be now able to compose your thesis statement, which is um, the uh, points for discussion and persuasion uh, in your uh, essay, okay? Uh, usually one sentence, doesn't have to be. Now, you need to be careful here, hint, hint, because uh, you have 250 words minimum, uh, maximum about 350, and um, you must give details. So you might not be able to write about all of this information that we've discussed. So make sure to choose uh, wisely, okay? Um, Kyber, the what has caused this phenomenon, I believe is already contained in the advantages, okay? And of course, today it's been uh, rapidly uh, accelerated. Um, just a quick kind of bonus question. This is, of course, that quick, clever, critical thinking. Uh, what has uh, accelerated online learning nowadays? This is kind of a bonus question, but you have to be careful not to digress into this too much. Digress means don't get too lost in this idea. You might be able to weave this cleverly into your essay, but of course, uh, just in recent times, online learning has been greatly accelerated. Um, what has led to that? Yeah, Andre says the pandemic. Yeah, when it's actually dangerous for people uh, to uh, interact with each other. So, yeah, so... Another advantage, of course, of online learning that we didn't talk about is uh, people can do it even when they're sick, right? So even when people have health problems or maybe some people have mobility problems, um, they're not able to walk for some reason. They can still learn online, right? Okay, but again, be careful not to digress into that too much because you can lose focus and your essay can fall apart. So you have you do have to be very, very, very careful of how you mention that, okay? All right, um, so let's stick to the thesis, all right? What's the thesis? So what's the main points for discussion? Think about whether or not you want to leave your reader on a positive or negative uh, note, okay? 
Um, Natalie, definitely saving time, I think, is key. Okay, so I'll write the thesis and then you write the thesis um, and we'll compare, all right? Okay, so. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, uh, let's see what you have. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with your comments, Kuldeep. Um, check your connection. Okay, uh, Rajveer says, there are various reasons for the popularity of online education. The benefits of this development are diversity and affordability, and its deficits are lack of focus and movement. Um, so, Rajveer, uh, it seems like you're going to be discussing the popularity and the benefits first in your essay, and then you're going to be discussing the negatives. That's okay if that's the direction you want to go. Just make sure that that is, in fact, the direction that you want to take in your essay or the structure, the organization that you want to take in your essay. Uh, Rashika says, the benefits of learning online are convenience and affordability. However, the negatives are distractions and technical problems. Um, are distractions and um, instead of technical problems, try to say that in one word, Rashika, you have to have parallel grammar. Okay. All right, Mahi says, although a major deficit of online led education is that it leads to social isolation, its benefits include uh, cost effectiveness and easy accessibility of time and place. Uh, Mahi, keep it simple when you can, okay? So notice my thesis statement. Some negatives of remote learning are more distractions and less socialization. Let's fix that. Okay, so notice the parallel grammar students, more distractions, less socialization. Okay, um, and I'm writing about the negative first. While the main reasons for virtual learnings rise in popularity and its benefits are convenience, affordability, and diversity. Okay, so clearly I'm putting a lot more emphasis here and that's my second point. Okay, um, don't overthink it, students, especially if you've come up with these nice words in your planning. Use that in your thesis, okay? Uh, so many of you came up with these words, but now you're not using them in your thesis. Don't do that. Um, really nice thesis points, uh, in most cases, are one word, okay? We've never really talked about that, um, but in fact, uh, when you look at well-written university and college essays, in the thesis, the main points for argument, in most cases, the writer is strive, um, the author is striving for one word, 
one word points, okay? And if you can't do it in one word, then do it in two words, like more distractions, less socialization. Is, is that clear? So the more concise uh, you can keep your thesis points, the better, okay? Uh, and really good journal articles, really good essays uh, have this quality that they keep their thesis points to single words in most cases. Okay, and I think that's a great idea for the IELTS because in the IELTS you have 250 word minimum, so it's a short essay. So you really want to be that concise if it's possible. Okay, all right, Kyber, Carolina, good. All right, so you're picking that up. Yeah, so really, really, really strive for these one word thesis points. And by the way, these kinds of words like convenience, affordability, diversity, you're picking up lexical resource marks. That's what the examiner is looking for when they're thinking, hey, this person has good lexical resource because they can use that single accurate word to define that concept, okay? So strive for that, all right? Okay. It's not always possible. Sometimes you have to use more words, but whenever you can, strive for that one word. Okay, so let's do the introduction. Um, so the introduction now is um, the hook, the background, and the thesis. So start writing this, members, and then I'll keep looking up at the board and uh, we'll um, kind of compare amongst ourselves. And I will try to give some feedback as well. So we got... Uh, five minutes for this as well, okay. All right, um, so uh, here we go. Um, Kyber, I'll read everyone's as much as I can while keeping the lesson going, okay, because we have only about five minutes left to get this introduction done. Um, for Dog says, online education is thriving these days. Um, yeah, All right, I'm going with this one. Certainly, the revolution of online education is well underway worldwide. Okay, so revolution, I think it's a great word here because it is a revolution in the education system. So for centuries and centuries, of course, humans have learned in person, in classrooms or in groups, uh, physically present teachers and students. And now the world is definitely transforming with the advancement of technology, whereby uh, there's this shift to online education. So certainly the revolution of online education is well underway worldwide. We see this in most parts of the world now. Yeah. So Bahrat says e-learning is spreading um, all over the world with more knowledge. Um, yeah, I don't know about the more knowledge part. I think that's kind of going into a different argument, Bakhrat. Um, but the beginning is good. Okay. Uh, Kyber, nowadays knowledge can be gained in various ways. It's too broad. Uh, remember, Kyber, remember, students, that your hook should contain your topic. The topic here is online learning. So your hook should contain the topic. Okay, and then the definition. So,
Okay, um, so... Uh, here is my background. Um, so the definition and the importance all kind of rolled into one sentence. Uh, modern technology, namely the computer and the internet, has enabled billions of people to learn from the comfort of their homes, and this has led and this has had a massive impact on education systems. Uh, notice that right away I'm reflecting that present perfect. So uh, the computer and the internet has enabled billions of people, um, and this has had a massive impact on education systems. Okay, all right. Rahul says, internet learning has gradually shifted the focus from classroom uh, teaching. With computers and the internet, a student can learn from expert teachers from anywhere in the world. Okay, Rahul, good. So you have your hook and your background there. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Ferdov says, it is a pivotal tool during... Uh, continuing pandemic like nowadays. Uh, for Dobbs, again, I would maybe stay away from that. As I mentioned, that could be an interesting point at some part of the essay. I would say maybe the conclusion or near the end and the advantages, but I wouldn't introduce that right away. Okay. Uh, online learning was already quite popular before the pandemic. The pandemic is just accelerating this, of course. Okay. All right, Rajveer says, pupils have been using hardware and software to gain knowledge from the comfort of their homes, and it, this has revolutionized the education system. Good, Rajveer. Rajveer, don't use the word tools, hardware and software. It's enough. All right. Okay, and then I just simply take uh, my thesis and in at the end of... the uh, introductory paragraph. So this is now my uh, band nine introduction. Uh, let me review it to make sure I don't have any critical mistakes. Certainly the revolution of online education is well underway worldwide. Modern technology, namely the computer and the internet, has enabled billions of people to learn from the comfort of their homes and this has had a massive impact on education systems. There's a little mistake there. It's not a major, but let's correct it. Take out that S. Uh, some negatives of remote learning are more distractions and less socialization, while the main reasons for virtual learning, reasons for virtual, uh, I don't like the word learnings, so I'm going to say educations or pedagogies rise in popularity there we go now i like my word choice a little bit more so some negatives of remote learning are more distractions and less socialization while the main reason for virtual pedagogies rise in popularity and its benefits are convenience affordability and diversity. Okay, great. So I'm happy with that introduction. My essay now has clear direction and it seems to have that band nine content. Okay, members, really nice participation today. I, I love seeing how um, both your thinking and your writing is really improving. So many of those students who have been with me now regularly for months and months and uh, are coming class after class, uh, I can definitely see your improvement, and I hope that you can see it too. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, um, you are improving. Uh, Kaldeep, pedagogy is just a synonym for education. Okay, If you look up pedagogy, you'll find the word education. Okay, It's professional education. All right, um, so that's it for now. I will be back in about 30 minutes uh, with listening parts three and four, where everybody will be able to join the chat. Members, we'll finish this essay tomorrow, so uh, keep thinking about it. Maybe uh, do a couple practice runs uh, if you have some time today. And for everybody watching, uh, to see all of our HD videos on writing and the other sections of the IELTS exam, 
Uh, join us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com uh, for general IELTS. You will find some outstanding online learning material for the IELTS exam there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. You're very welcome, everyone. Thank you, Carolina, to our moderator. Thank you, uh, members. Hopefully, I will see you all tomorrow to finish this essay. Hopefully, I'll see you in 30 minutes to uh, finish the listening section that we started yesterday. I'm Adrian. Bye for now. Hopefully, see you soon.